The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple, and all the people started coming to him. Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisee said to him, You testify on your own behalf. Your testimony cannot be verified. Jesus answered and said to them, even if I do testify on my own behalf, my testimony can be verified because I know where I came from and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge by appearances, but I do not judge anyone. Even if I should judge, my judgment is valid because I am not alone, but it is I and the Father who sent me. Even in your law, it is written that the testimony of two men can be verified. I testify on my behalf, and so does the Father who sent me. So they said to him, Where is your father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the treasury in the temple area, but no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of the Lord. A few years back, a notable political figure was asked what his definition of sin was. And this was his answer. What does not align with my values. It sounds good on the surface. But what if this was some type of gangster or a corrupt judge, as we see in the, the opening reading today from the Old Testament in Daniel. These are two corrupt judges. They have crafted a set of values of their own. They want to have their way with an innocent woman. And they extort her, blackmailing her, into giving them their way. Otherwise, they will make it public and she will be killed. The scriptures, if you read them carefully, imply that this is not the first time that these two corrupt judges are doing this. They have an upstanding record in the community, supposedly, but they are corrupt indeed. And they use their power to influence people badly and get what they want. So we can't define sin as what does not align with my values. It doesn't work. The, the, one, of the, one of the issues here is conscience. Our conscience properly formed, should form our values. A conscience is caught often mistaken for this ethic, what does not align with my values. What I feel is right or wrong 
is the right thing. That's where most of us have are led to exercise our conscience, how I feel, what I think. It's interesting that Jesus doesn't even go that far with his understanding. He says right here, he says, it is I and my Father. He doesn't do anything without his heavenly Father. And if Jesus doesn't do anything without his heavenly Father, why should we? And so the root and the formation of our conscience needs to be with what God says. A loving Father who can cast light on everything and see far and penetrate what is truly good, right, and just. And so a conscience properly formed is one that is informed by God himself. The Ten Commandments are a great place to start. Our conscience is, is designed to be a stirring of the Holy Spirit in us to make us wise in how to make choices that are right and just. Daniel, in the, this story, is, it gets an experience of the Holy Spirit leading him to make a decision about these two corrupt judges. His conscience is afflicting him. It's obvious by his testimony that he gives that he knows something about these judges intellectually, but he also knows something about them spiritually through a little gift of the Holy Spirit. And he's able to help see the truth through all this. And so it's with what God informs us by what we know about our faith, the church teachings, the Ten Commandments, the scriptures, Christian moral values, all these things, as we get to know them, they form our conscience and give us a value system that is under God. This is not a popular value system for today, but it is definitely a value system that works at the promotion of life and protecting life. These two corrupt judges reveal the consequences of consciences that are not for, properly formed and consciences that lead us astray into being people who could possibly be making decisions against life instead of promoting it. The, the open is some of the, some of the um, in the longer version of the reading from Daniel, one of the first things it says is about these two judges. They suppressed their conscience. They would not allow their eyes to look toward heaven. They refused to look at God to inform their choice. And there's something else going on here which is quite related, uh, you could say, to what we experience today. The whole idea of lust, which seems to begin with the temptation of the eyes and curiosity. They wouldn't look to heaven. Instead, they looked for their visual pleasure, which led them down a long path of vice. They did not keep in mind just judgments. That refers to the fact that at some point, our choices are, taking, are taken into eternity. And I'm not saying this is a threat. It's just a fact. If our choices take us into eternity, then we will have to appear before a just judge who casts light on everything. And a conscience properly formed makes that judgment a time of beauty and peace for us. But a conscience ill-formed could be a horror show, as we see with these two corrupt judges. Daniel would say to these two corrupt judges, now have your past sins come to term. It all becomes real now. And so Jesus invites us to function under the testimony 
of our Heavenly Father to influence everything that we do for life so that we can be life-giving as He is and have a conscience that's formed to that end. Regina Cieli, Letare, Alleluia, qui aque menu misti portare, Alleluia, resurrexit sicut dixit, Alleluia.